Welcome back, it's me Lou. Today we're going to take a look at some tabletop wargaming miniatures. More specifically, this is going to be a rescue and restore video. So earlier this afternoon, I visited my friendly local gaming store and I went through their their section of used miniatures and just stuff that, you know, people sold or traded to the shop and the shop, you know, they're just I don't know, you're free to pick at them and just get whatever. And I found this baggie of Warhammer 40k and we have some Space Marines here. So it was a little sandwich baggie and there's 10 uh, BA Marines. And the BA stands for Blood Angels. So in this little sandwich baggie we have 12 unfinished blood angel marines now i know i called this at the start of the video this is going to be a rescue and restore but in this case it's more of a rescue than a restore um there isn't really much to restore here uh these miniatures they were assembled by the previous owner and the previous owner even primed them but for whatever reason they didn't go through and you know finish painting them it looks like all they did was the very bare minimum. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just take these and paint them up. So I mean that's where the so-and-so restore comes in. But the rescue is pretty much me just... It's almost like adopting a puppy from the local pound. Um, I saw these in the pound and I wanted to rescue them. So yeah, we have 10 uh, Space Marines here. Now these are Blood Angels. And it looks like these are the older model types. Uh, they don't look like Primaris Space Marines. These look like regular uh, Tactical Marines. And uh, I was doing some research trying to figure out what set these might have come from. And let me get that out real quick. So I believe these um, Blood Angels came in this set. Uh, it's the Start Collecting Box set um, from a Games Workshop. This is strictly just Blood Angels. And this box set included uh, 12 miniatures, and this is for Warhammer 40k. So the 12 miniatures you got in here, you got the tank, which is the Predator. You got the um, Terminator Captain. And then the remaining 10 were the Tactical Marines, which I believe are these guys. So I believe these miniatures were from this set. And here I have another photo of them. So it looks like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, so it looks like I have 10. And uh, I think one of them uh, might be a un I'm not sure if it's necessarily unaccounted for or depending on uh, which bits they use, they might have assembled these differently than some of the ones on here. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to this. Uh, I, for whatever reason, the previous owner decided to part ways with this set. Maybe they just wanted the Terminator Captain and the Predator out of the box set and they didn't feel the need to use these. Or it could also be the case that since these are outdated models, um, these are the older Tactical Marines. They're not, they're not the new Primaris models. But I don't know. I'm, I'm still in love with them. I think these are great. And I'm looking forward to painting them. Uh, let's take a quick look at all of them individually. Now, this is a nice one here. He has the bolter. And then on his pauldron, you can see uh, the blood angel symbol. And then on, he has his jump pack. There's a little chalice on the back in the middle. Uh, next, um, we have another guy. Kind of has that ceremonial kind of like crown on the on his jump pack, chain sword. Uh, looks like he has a blowtorch, I think. It looks like a bolter, but it also looks like a blowtorch. So um, forgive me, I'm kind of new to um, Warhammer. Um, I've, I mean, I've, I've I've admired it from afar for like <laughs> for like ages since like the late '80s. 
but it's it's not until this the past year and a half to two years that I kind of started dipping my toes into it. So this is a great looking guy. This one's painted with a different sheen. Um, or no, this one isn't primed at all. I take it back. This guy isn't primed. I might have to prime this guy first before I paint him. Yeah, the detail on these are beautiful. Um, he has some chains on his back. Um, some wings on, on the crest of his pauldron. Really detailed. I kind of wish my camera had like a, um, a deeper focus or like macro, but hopefully you can see these details and it doesn't help that these, these miniatures are primed black. So this guy gets set aside and primed separately. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to this. I'm going to do that. As soon as I get off this video, I'm just going to go outside and just give this a quick base coat. Now, the, now this isn't going to be like a really clean paint job. Um, this is going to be quick and dirty. I just wanted... I, the minute I saw these, my first thought was I want to do... I just want a really quick project that I could finish in like an afternoon or two. So that this is what this is going to be. Um, currently, I'm assembling the Warhammer Indominus box set. I'm going to start covering uh, tabletop gaming a little on my channel. And uh, um, I'm looking forward to that. But for me, I'm just excited about painting these. Uh, I think the thing I was most excited about, these were already pre-assembled. As much as I enjoy the hobby from uh, the, the limited amount of time I've invested in it so far, is that the one thing I... I, I it's not that I hate it, but... The whole part of assembling the miniatures makes me kind of crazy, especially if you're putting together like an army. Like doing one or two isn't bad, but then, you know, if you have like 60 miniatures on your table that you have to assemble, it's like, I don't know, for me it's like the most excruciating thing and I don't look forward to it. But these are, most of these, with the exception of this guy, these are already all assembled and primed. They just need some loving care and some paint, which... I'm going to do this weekend, and I can't wait. I'm really excited about that. So we're going to do that. So um, let's get started. So I'm going to run off and get a base coat on these, and I'll be back in a second. And I'm back. Okay, so I completed basing... Um, the, the Marines. So what I did was I took a piece of this is a piece of foam core right here and I took some double-sided duct tape and applied it to the foam core and then I proceeded to place each of the Marines onto this. Now if you look carefully I only put it um, half of the Marine onto the tape. Uh, this double-sided duct tape it's the adhesion is really really strong so um, I didn't want to place these on too hard because they're kind of, it'd be more difficult to remove from the tape. So I essentially just placed them on very gently onto the tape and then just tapped the back end of it just to make sure at least one point of the model was um, adhered, you know, pretty firmly onto the tape. So the cool thing with doing this is that I could just easily um, remove these uh, from this foam core. So essentially this, this piece of board is almost like a, a spray stick. Um, I, was, I was able to handle it with one hand while with the other hand uh, spray down the models. So the paint I used to spray down these models, it was testers, um, it was a lacquer, it was revving red. Um, I know it's very unconventional, it's um, model car paint. But I had it in my um, stash of paint and for some reason I just like that color a lot. It's very, <laughs> it's very non-games workshop um, looking. It's, a, it's kind of like a metallic candy finish, which I'm not sure is appropriate for a Space Marine, but I think it looks cool. So what comes next is, um, let me take one of these off. So I'll remove this. As, as you can see, here's the double-sided duct tape. And um, there's still an adhesion on here, so I could probably use this, um, this board again. Uh, one thing I forgot... Um, one thing I kind of glossed over when I got these Marines is that I failed to examine them closely. So on the on the bolters, on the guns, 
Um, the previous owner, they didn't drill out the barrels um, on the tip of the gun. So I'm going to have to do that myself. And I'm just going to use, to do that, I'm just going to use a, a pin drill. So on some of these Marines, on their rifles, um, there's a hole here that has to be drilled out. A hole on the other side. And of course, I'm just going to drill out the barrel right in the front. Um, it's not required, but I just think it looks better. Some there's some people out there they'll just you know opt to just paint a little dot to indicate that's where the hole of the uh, bolter is. But for me, um, and on my previous Marines that I've done, I've always made sure to drill those out. But since I didn't assemble these, I kind of overlooked that. So I'm gonna have to go back and just drill out all the holes on their weapons, which shouldn't be that difficult. So I'm like I'm liking the way this finish came out. Um, it's like I said, it's a very non-conventional color scheme, but I really like that shade of red a lot. And one thing I'm kind of learning is that um, this has to be a fun hobby for me. <laughs> it was, I mean, some of the Marines I've painted in the past, it, 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 it was kind of more of a chore and kind of frustrating because I'd be on Instagram and I'd just be looking at all the different artists out there and seeing what they were doing with their models. And sometimes I'd feel like there was, there was kind of like this need to like keep up with the Joneses and paint at a certain level. But, you know, to be honest, um, I'd rather paint these a lot faster and just be, have them be table ready than, um, you know, I'm not out to win out any awards or, or anything. And I do have a greater sense of accomplishment if I finish a lot more models in a shorter amount of time. But it's a hobby and it's like I said, this has to be fun for me. If I put too much stress on myself to like create these immaculate perfect paint jobs I'm just gonna be miserable so yeah that's gonna be the next step so right now they're gonna they're based uh, then I'm gonna drill out the weapons and then we'll start adding some layers onto this painting some of the details and for me it's like it doesn't have to be perfect this has to be completed um, I'm also currently working on the Indominus box set and some other miniatures on the side so I just want I want this project to be a, a nice weekend project. Um, so hopefully in a couple of days I'll have this finished. So let's get to the next step and we'll go from there. Be back in a second. And I'm back. Okay, before I go into the painting stage, um, I just want to show you some of the preparation I work before going into it. As I mentioned in the previous video, um, one of the things I wanted to take care of was um, the barrels of the guns. The previous owner failed to drill out the barrels on the guns. It's not, nece it's, it's not necessary, but I think it's a nice little detail that makes the bolters look a lot better. So I took this. This is a simple um, pin vise drill. Uh, I got this online on Amazon. It's really nice. I took one of the smaller drill bits that came with it, and I proceeded to drill out the barrels. Um, if you look carefully, I drilled out the tip right there. And there's these holes on each side. Drilled out one there. And then carefully drilled out the one uh, right there. So the bolter gun looks a lot better you know, having the barrels drilled out. And I even did that. I did that on all the, on all the Marines and including um, this guy with the flamethrower, he had two holes that needed to be drilled out, one here and one up there. Uh, I was kind of conflicted because he has all these, they're almost like, I guess, uh, maybe like cooling vents or cooling holes on the side here, but there's so many. And I was, I was kind of conflicted. I wasn't sure if I wanted to drill those out or not, mostly because uh, if I drilled them out on one side, I'd have to match them on the other. And I'm not confident enough in my skill that, you know, I was kind of worried that if I drilled out on one side, you know, how close would I be able to match it and not mess up the other side? So I'm just going to leave it alone. Um, the, the holes that are at least sculpted in, they're kind of deep. So, you know, after I paint it, I could apply a wash and the wash could seep into the recesses and make it look even a little bit more deeper. You know, in an ideal world, I'd love to be able to take this pin vise and just drill all of them out. But as, I, as I've stated earlier, I just, I'm just kind of worried that, you know, with my skill, I wouldn't match it out perfectly and maybe I'd drill out on one side and then it would come out, you know, in the wrong area and I'd mess up the plastic. 
So, you know, as long as I have the, the two tips drilled out, I'm happy with that. Okay, so what I did now before I go into the painting stage, um, I have some, I have a bunch of like prescription bottles throughout the house and I made these makeshift paint handles. You can actually buy like real paint handles um, for painting or miniatures online. But I like these a lot. Um, it was really simple. You just take a piece of like blue tack or poster tack, mount it underneath the base of the figure, and then you can just plop that on top of the bottle cap. And since these bottles are hollow, it's awesome because you can like adjust the weight of them. Uh, and I did that just by adding a bunch of coins in here. So. You know, when I'm actually painting, it has some weight to it, so it gives me a little bit better control. And on the plus side, if it's on the table, since it's weighted, it's not going to easily tip over. You know, it takes some force to knock it over. It'll always kind of reset. And it's cool too because there's a wide enough base here, so that if it does tip over, if I perfectly center the figure, you know, none of the figure is actually going to hit the table. So, you know, I'm pretty safe on that. So the next stage is I'm going to go into the, actually the painting stage. So I've already applied the base layer with a, a red lacquer spray paint. Um, you know, that was just something I had laying around the house. It's It was made by testers. The color was revving red. It's clearly a model paint made for model cars, but I, I just love the luster and the metallic finish of it. And it probably goes against what a lot of other people would do, but I don't know. I just wanted to see how it looks, so I use that. So what comes next is I'm going to start applying different layers onto this guy. And i got to figure out, you know, which how am I going to ta uh, take this on? You know, what am I going to paint first? So I have to figure out a painting order. You know, am I going to start with the chest emblem first, or am I going to do the eyes? Am I going to do the smaller details, like all these pipes? You know, when am I going to paint the weapon? I have to, I have to th consider that. I got to think of a color scheme. Um, so this marine, it's a blood angel. Blood angels are technic are um, traditionally red, uh, and their chest symbols, I believe, it's normally black. But I've seen some people take liberties online and you know paint them red with a gold symbol. So that's I'm gonna have to make that decision there. You know, am I gonna be adhering to like what's considered canon? And make this accurate or am I going to like embellish a little and take some liberties and go with my own color scheme? You know, you know, who knows? And one thing I also have to decide on too is um, the base here. You know, what am I going to do with the base? You know, and what color am I going to paint the rim of the base? How am I going to decorate the base? Uh, am I going to like, you know, use grass tufts to make it look like there's grass? Am I going to use... Um, a texture paint to make it look like he's standing on gravel or am I gonna go a completely different route and greeble it with like more mechanical looking bits so maybe he looks like he's standing like on a solid floor um, a lot of fun decisions to be made uh, really looking forward to like you know really diving deep into this project so I have like 10 of these marines to paint and it's gonna be cool um, I don't want to stress out too much painting these uh, the first handful of Marines I painted was maybe back in, uh, I want to say, uh, maybe uh, November or December of um, last year, I think. Or maybe even earlier than that. Um, around that time, I was kind of getting back into like collecting and painting gaming miniatures. And I really wanted to tackle some Space Marines. So I... I grabbed a handful and I painted some of those up and in between then and now I've been painting so many different kinds of um, gaming miniatures uh, I, I recently completed painting an entire set of the old vintage board game hero quest I want to do a video on that just to show um, show off some of the miniatures in there and I've just been kind of working my way up I'll just just try to kind of like establish a style for myself and learn new techniques uh, but like I said, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself. Like it's so easy for me to go on Instagram and just feel intimidated and overwhelmed by seeing what some of the other artists out there are producing. Like there's some really professional and award-winning stuff out there, and I'm nowhere near that level. So I I don't want to be discouraged. You know, I just have to keep keep in mind that I want to paint at my skill level, and just produce results that you know for me look satisfactory, and. You know, as long as I'm having fun, that's the important thing. I don't want to, I don't want this to turn into some sort of like, 
you know, nightmare thing where I dread doing these because I've, I've kind of already amassed a, a, a pretty sizable collection of miniatures that I want to paint. And I don't want my, my pile of shame to get too out of hand. So this is going to be a fun exercise. And by the time all said and done, um, hopefully I'll have 10 new blood angels that are painted up and I'll be able to share those with you. So I'm going to put these down and we're going to get to the next stage, which is painting. Um, I'll drop in every now and then with updates showing you what I've done. And if I get to the point where I feel confident enough and if it's something that I could easily navigate doing, maybe I'll actually even um, video me painting live instead of this coming instead of coming back and forth with you know uh, with a finished piece. I think it'd be fun to actually show you you know with me doing the actual process of painting it. But you know, it's, it's like I said, I'll see if if I get to that point where I feel confident enough in doing that. Um, so yeah, this is a fun project and I'll see you in a second with the next phase. And I'm back. Okay. So where we're at right now is, um, I've completed adding the base colors to all these guys. I could, I could probably get more crazy with the details, but, uh, for now, I think this is where I want to, I want to be at. So I call, uh, I painted all the all the weapons like the bolt guns, painted the lenses um, on the helmets, all the scrolls and all the purity seals. Those are all painted in um, some of the vents and boosts on the jetpacks are all colored. Um, anything that's ornamental, like some of these guys have like gold chains and bloodstones. Uh, those have been all painted in. So let's take a look at some of these real quick. Let's move this aside. And first up, let's take a look at this guy here. I like this guy a lot. He has a crazy flamethrower. So in terms of the details, as I've stated earlier, um, I completed painting in all the base colors of everything that needs to be colored in. So on his eyes, if the camera can catch it, um, I painted them green uh, for where the lenses are. The little opening on his mouth, that little vent, that's kind of like a silver. Same with the uh, tubes that connect the, the helmet to the vent or the rest or the breathing apparatus or the rebreather, whatever you want to call it. So the Aquila on the chest, the um, symbol, uh, it's a matte black because I kind of want to have some stark contrast between that and the slightly like metallic candy finish I have on the armor and on the center I gave it a little bit of retributor um, armor it's kind of like a gold uh, for the flamethrower color the end kind of like a kind of like a silver um, some gold on here silver tubes and as you can see some of the ornamental stuffs colored gold and over here we have the purity seal. I kind of went with a more earthy color. And there's some of the more details. So I tried to match the base color, this green, with what I'm using on the lenses. Just to kind of pull everything together so it's a little bit more cohesive. What I plan to do in terms of the bases, I kind of want to give it that retro like 90s look that a lot of the games workshop models had. Where it's like a very bright green and then kind of give it like a textured grass. And for the grass, I'm thinking that I might use, um, I have two choices, I actually have three choices. Uh, for one, I could either just flock it, uh, apply some PVA glue here on a brush, and then just brush it onto the base, and then use like, like that grass kind of flock, and just kind of cover it over. Or I could use a texture paint. Um, I have a, it's kind of like a light brown texture paint. So what a texture paint is, it's actually, I mean, it is what it says. It's paint, but when it dries, it kind of leaves like a like a, like a rough surface or a texture. And the paint I kind of have, it kind of leaves like a sandy, gritty texture onto it. And I've used that before. Um, for example, here's an, uh, an Ultramarine. This is an Assault Intercessor. And this is how I base this one. I used a texture paint here and it was like a light brown and then I applied kind of like a 
I think an Agrax Earthshade, which is kind of a more of like a, it's kind of like an earthier wash. And it kind of gave it the same color as the base, which is, um, I believe this is a Steel Legion Drab. And then uh, I kind of glued some little rocks and pebbles to the base and applied some grass tufts here. So I, I kind of want to do something similar here, but I, I'm, I'm kind of burned out on using the texture paint because it makes me kind of nuts. So I'm just thinking that if I just brush on some PVA glue onto this and then dip this guy into like um, a small container of very fine grain sand and pull it out, it'll leave a, a sandy texture on the surface of the base. And I can just color that with green to kind of give it that retro 90s look. Yeah, so I'm really excited to have the Blood Angels done. It's going to be really nice. Now in terms of... Um, uh, let's, oh yeah, I also have this on hand right now. <clears throat> this is another Ultramarine, but I kind of painted this in the color scheme of a Tech Marine, which explains why it's red. But he still has his chapter on the on the um, pauldron here. So this guy was uh, colored red also. But I went a little bit more in... Uh, I don't know, I, I, I kind of went a little bit further with this guy than I did this. Like, the red I used here is kind of a candy finish. You know, I don't want to really mess around with that too much. Whereas this guy here, I think I might have used um, corn, what's it called? Blood corn or corn blood or I can't remember. Or it might have been like Mephiston red. And after I applied the red, I kind of detailed all the like little nooks and crannies and all these crevices by applying a wash to it. I think I might use this Newland oil, which is this. So if you're not familiar with this, uh, you apply this to like, you know, like metallic bit, like machinery kind of bits. And this is a very watered down paint. It'll seep into all the cracks and crevices and it'll really bring out the details like in the weapons and like on the chest. So I applied that into the little, all the little scribed lines in his armor. And I think, I want to say I might have dry brushed like a very light red over the edges of this guy just to bring out the edges more. But the thing is with this, the paint I used on this guy, it's a little bit more reflective and it's it, it works well with the light. That when I put this guy under the light, the light just naturally catches all the edges and the shadows, especially the since the way I kind of painted it was more of like a zenithal kind of highlighting effect. So I don't really feel the need to like... Uh, add a wash to this guy too much i might in certain areas i know for sure i'll probably add a wash to the um the weaponry just to bring out the details but in terms of the armor um i, I might stay away from doing a wash at the very least i might just edge highlight some of the higher surfaces on the armor just to bring out the surface detail more and i'm thinking about using like a lighter red like this uh plump pink you know apply a little on my brush and then very carefully, I'll just go over some of the higher edges. And like, for example, you see like where these, there's these white highlights on the armor. Essentially what I'm going to do, I'm just going to actually paint those on using this. But I don't want to get too carried, away, too carried away because as I've mentioned, you know, I really like how light this naturally comes off of this guy. And I don't want to get too nuts with it. Um, I, I'm i still trying to get the, you know, get back into painting and the... the you know, trying to find my groove. In some models, I get too carried away with the washes. So this one, I kind of want to pull back. I just want to have very clean looking figures. Uh, as long as the details are brought out and it just looks clean, that's, that's all I kind of really want. Now here's another guy. This guy is a dude without a helmet. Um, I got to figure out what I'm going to do with the face. I'm horrible at painting eyes because they're so small and there's i mean there's artists out there they're they're great at doing that stuff but for me i've kind of learned that if you're not good at painting eyes it's okay you don't need to at the very least i'll probably just apply some sort of flesh wash and maybe paint in some of the highlights and shadows on his face but i mean for the most i'm, I'm just really content with wh where these guys are right now uh, i don't want to get too crazy with them because i don't want to burn myself out because, I, I mean, my goal right now is, after I'm done painting this, I want to move on and paint the Indominus box set, which is like 60 plus miniatures. And for me, it's more about this uh, quantity over quality. 
as long as for me, as long as these are at a level, if as long as they're painted at a level where they're at least table ready or battle ready, I'm cool with that. I think for more individual models, I'll take my time and really bring out the details and get crazy with it. But for now, just painting armies and stuff, I just I just want to you know do the bare minimum just so they look nice uh, once they're on the gaming table. For example, I have this guy here. Uh, this is a Reaper miniature, and this guy is. I fell in love with this when I saw it in the store. It's gorgeous. It's this crazy skeleton guy on a throne. So for something like this, I'll take my time and really, you know, do as much as I could in something like this. Because this is kind of just a one-off. But for, you know, if I'm painting a tactical squad of 10 dudes like this, it's, uh, I just want to get through with it. You know, the, my, my mentality, this is something I carry over from, like, my work life. Is that I, I like to work fast, and, I, and even though I'm working fast, I do like to make sure the results I produce are quality and it's high. But you know, I, there's a certain point where I, if I drag on too long on this project, it's, I'm gonna end up hating it, and that's the last thing I want to do. Because right now I'm really enjoying myself. You know, I'm moving at a nice pace. I'm putting in a couple hours every night, and for me, just to batch paint everything at once, it's really cool, and I'm just loving all the detail I'm getting and. The final results look always really nice. So yeah, this is kind of where I'm at right now. This will probably be the last step of the video before uh, the final finished reveal. But I just wanted to go over this real quickly. Uh, for some of these guys, like for right now, the bare minimum for me right now is just bringing out some of these details more. So in addition to adding like um, highlights using like ag or do applying a wash like Agrax Earthshade. Um, and Newell and Oil to some of these models. I'm also going to do some edge highlighting. Just a little. I don't want to get too carried away. So, for example, um, as I talked about earlier, you know, bring out some of these highlights. I'm probably going to use like a, you know, like a lighter red or pink for the reds. Um, for the tabards, uh, which is kind of like these skirt little pieces here. Um, I want to kind of like bring out some of the higher edges using like a, maybe like a sturgeon tan. And on the guns, highlighting some of the edges with that, probably with a gray. Like, a, I mean, this is a gray primer, but I kind of like the shade a lot. So I'll just very carefully apply some of them on the edges around some of the weaponry. And I don't want to get too nuts with this. Um, I just want this project to be done with. And I'm excited because I'm kind of like, you know, I'm kind of rounding that corner and I'm getting there. But some of these models, they're really beautiful. Uh, it kind of baffles me like when people I, I kind of understand why people sell some of their unfinished stuff but for me it's like an opportunity just to just like paint something but I don't want to get to that point I don't want to be one of those guys who just has too much on his plate that I get so burned out that I decide to just get you know end the hobby altogether or sell my models or just put them on a shelf never to be looked at again so I just for now I just want to take on as much as I can handle and right now just painting a batch of 10 of these right now it's I kind of feel this kind of like my limit if I was if this was a smaller like squad of like maybe this I don't know three dudes or something I'd probably go nuts and add more detail but I think for now this is the bare minimum and it looks nice you know these are even though these are the older models um you know, these aren't the new, the newer Primaris ones. That, uh, they're still really cool. Even though the proportions are a lot different than these uh, newer models like here. The proportions here are really nice. These are a little bit on the more squat and like cartoony looking. But I still think they look awesome. Okay, um, let's take a look at these last few. Whoever assembled these models, you know, the previous owner, I think he did a really cool job of just like um, giving them nice poses and uh, for their weapon loadouts, you know, giving each one kind of like, you know, a unique combination that would kind of complement their armor well. Now, I wasn't sure if this came from a hobbyist who was just like, 
want to paint these up or if this is an actually an active player and he's very mindful about which weapons he assigns to his um, models. Like for me, I'm new to the hobby. Um, I haven't played a game yet. And I'm, I'm more right now, the thing that fascinates me the most about Warhammer right now is, is the models and the lore. I really want to learn more about the fiction because it's really deep. And the models, I think, are, it's just a fun thing to do. I love painting miniatures. I feel like I'm kind of cheating because I didn't assemble these. But at the same time, you know, I kind of rescued these from the shop. They were just kind of sitting there. And I got them for a decent price. So, yeah, so this is where I'm at. Um, so the next, when, it, when you see me next, it'll be the completed reveal. So let's get to that. Okay, I'm back one last time. Um, so I know I, I said previously in the last uh, segment that um, it's most likely that I was just going to finish up painting the models and basing them and going straight to the reveal. Uh, but I finished these models last night and something weird kind of happened to them. So after I finished painting them, um, I sprayed them with a matte varnish. Uh, I believe it was... I think I want to say it might have been Krylon brand. And I've used it before, but it, it I don't know, I'm not sure. It might have been the humidity when I was letting these things dry. But I think the humidity did something to the the matte varnish and it kind of I'm all right, so I'm kind of torn on this. It kind of removed the luster that the original red finish had on these models, which I didn't mind that much um, because on the plus side, it kind of gave all the different colors a very even um smooth value to it so all the co all the colors kind of like they kind of feel n none of the colors overpower the other which which i kind of wanted which i thought was a cool effect but losing that kind of like vibrancy and the richness and the red it kind of not that it um, bummed me out or anything but it just it kind of removed that really richness in it but at the same time, as you can see here, all the colors kind of smoothed out pretty even. One thing I'm not sure if the camera's catching also is that the matte varnish I used, it had to have been the humidity because I've used this brand like dozens and dozens of times over. But uh, I think because of the humidity, it almost created like a, like a very like dusting or frosted effect. And it's not showing that well in the camera, but if you saw these in person, you would be able to see what I'm talking about. Um, there's kind of like a weird, like frosty, kind of like dusted look to these models, which I'm kind of torn on too, because it almost kind of makes the models look a little bit more antique, which I think is kind of a plus because um, when I did the, the bases here, as you can see, I based all my models kind of in that retro 90s Warhammer kind of style with the really bright, almost neon kind of green and a little bit of like yellow dry brushing uh, just to like really give the texture some pop. So it's kind of weird because it makes the models look like they've been sitting on a shelf for a while and that they're dated from that time period, which is kind of cool, but... <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of conflicted on it. It's a cool effect, but at the same time, I do miss that really rich candy red that I initially had on these models. So moving forward, um, I'm just kind of wondering, you know, is this is this brand of varnish something I'm going to want to continue to use? Uh, we'll see. I mean, I've used it, you know, for a couple of years, and this past year, it's been really good to me with all the other miniatures I've painted. It looks good, but it really removed that luster that I kind of liked initially. You know, I was kind of hoping that the, um, the varnish would at least even out the colors, which it did. It really brought out the edges, and it, the way the, the light comes off of the models, it really picks up on the, the edges, and it kind of makes the shadows look a little bit deeper. But at the same time, it's kind of like I miss that really rich vibrancy in the color. So yeah, here are a couple of models and, you know, this will just give you an idea of what the finished uh, models look like before I go into the, you know, the slideshow gallery, you know, reveal of the video. So as I've stated earlier, you know, I finished basing them. I applied some PVA glue to the bases and then I dipped it into like fine grain sand 
and then once the sand dried, I colored the um, the base with the same color green that I had initially and also that I used on the lenses of the helmets. After that, I kind of like stippled on some, it's almost kind of like a, uh, I think it was called like putrid green or something. It's almost like a weird mix of green and yellow. And I kind of like stippled it and, and kind of like dabbed it on the surface, trying to catch the high edges of the sand to give it a little bit more texture. And when, once that was all taken care of, I applied a grass tuft, as you can see here. With, and I used PVA glue to glue on these tiny little rocks. So it kind of gives the environment, you know, a little bit, a little bit more authenticity, I guess. So, I mean, these are just four of the ten models. But overall, I'm happy with them. Um, they came out pretty good. So, yeah. I'm looking forward to doing some photography for this, and you'll get to see that in a little bit. I'm just going to put together a small slideshow at the end of this video. So, yeah, I really enjoyed painting these Blood Angels. I'm torn, though, because... It, I really loved that red finish I had initially, but at the same time, the varnish kind of created some sort of weird antiquing effect to the to the models. So the, it makes the models look, it almost dates them. Um, even though these models were produced like in the 2000s, the base was very inspired by the 90s, and it just makes the models look and feel a little bit older and kind of like more of a throwback or a vintage feel, which is cool. But at the same time, it's like I kind of wish. I still had this a little bit, like a, maybe like 15% of that luster that I had initially. Yeah, so these are all these are all great models. I liked how they turned out. I like this guy especially, this guy with this crazy like flamethrower. Yeah, so, you know, everything's good. Um, so what comes up next is this stick around and uh, I'm going to show these off in a nice little slideshow photo gallery kind of deal so i'll see you in a second <laughs> 